Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. On my channel, I like to do reviews, reactions to the news, politics. Today, I'm doing a review on The Bachelor. Um, every episode doesn't cease, is that the right way to say it? Doesn't cease to fail my expectations. Every episode, I'm like, it's gonna be okay. Things are okay. Things get crazy. I'm stammering right now because it's just jaw dropping. There's always something new, which if you guys saw the commercials, you kind of know what's gonna happen in this episode, but let's get into it. I have my notes right here. So if you see me looking over, I'm probably just trying to remember everything in chronological order. So don't trip and let's just get into this. Immediately, Matt is talking about how he's conflicted about Sarah leaving and then we all kind of knew this was gonna happen. We all kind of expected this and that's why it was kind of like bittersweet that she was leaving not only for Sarah herself because it's really unfortunate the circumstances that she had to leave due to her dad's illness but also just due to like the other girls. I feel like Matt's mind is going to be thinking about Sarah about her leaving because she left like on her end not so much because their romance was bad or there was any ill feelings between them more just about again like she left on her terms so he's probably going to be thinking about her and thinking like maybe potentially they can get together after because it did seem like they had like a good strong connection despite it was only a few weeks or so or a few days it's kind of hard to gauge the amount of time that they've been there. So he's kind of talking about that and now I'm like, oh my God, like is his mental and physical being going to be like into these girls or is he going to be thinking about that? So I'm kind of curious how that's going to play out the rest of the season. But then after that, like I mentioned about Sarah, the girls are talking about how happy they are versus Matt being upset because obviously the girls are bickering with each other. They're fighting for Matt's attention. So of course Matt's going to feel one way and the girls are going to feel completely different. And yeah, the girls are saying how happy they are about her not being there. Whereas Katie is actually being really mature grown about the whole situation like I mean I don't want her to leave on that situation I don't like that you guys are talking about her I don't like that you guys are being catty and I'm glad that she left on a good note with her on the last episode she's not just saying this because Sarah left she also addressed this to Sarah in the last episode so Sarah can already knows that Katie's on her side so I'm glad that that opportunity happened and that she's actually like standing up for her after she left too like it wasn't so much of an act the other girls have their group date and then disperse to have their one-on-one -on -one time after that so Katie and Victoria have like a one-on-one -on -one time with each other despite the group date happening and Victoria is kind of just asking Katie for an apology and asking her to like not be rude even though I'm not saying Katie was rude to Victoria but this is what Victoria is saying verbatim and like they start kind of cussing at each other. Victoria is asking for an apology like it just is obvious that they're not going to get to consensus and get on the same page about whatever they're arguing about. Like Victoria is just almost kind of finding a new person to be arguing with it with Sarah kind of like she didn't like her it's this girl it's Marilyn like at what point does Matt see that she's arguing with people at what point do producers step in like hey this girl's like harassing everybody and she's causing issues because it's a little bit much like it's only one person versus the whole house and no one else is standing up for these girls who are being attacked or maybe they don't see it somehow that's what I'm kind of like confused about after the group date ended Matt gives his group date Rose to Chelsea I feel really bad because I did not know her name despite her being a beautiful black woman it's just that there's a lot of people who do not get a lot of screen time on here people do not get their names on the screen unless he's talking to them there's still women who are like I have not talked to him since I left the limo so Chelsea I did not know her name until then but I'm really glad she had a group date Rose I love this representation I love this black love I just love different races on the tv rather than it's everyone almost looking exactly the same it's just really nice and like a good sense of like relief and new fresh of breath air however <laughs> the girls go to the third row ceremony and Matt gives a speech to the girls and he reassures them that he's there for them and I guess I'm glad he did that because I feel like some girls if they're smart enough they would know like hmm like he was really feeling Sarah and she's gone all of a sudden like is he not thinking about her is she just like aloof and gone like is that not a thing anymore like I think it's almost mature and like why so just think that like maybe that's not the best for them because she just left on like yikes circumstances but he says it to them to reconfirm that he's there for them and that there's like no interruption like how he's feeling about them and like continuing the rest of the season but then he kind of starts to have conversations with the girls and then I'm again I'm reminded that there's girls I don't know their names but that's just the reality of having one major bachelor slash bachelorette and like 30 girls all striving for one person and not everyone getting that one-on-one -on -one time or producers cutting out times because I'm like where are these girls like why am I not seeing them on the camera their names the rose ceremony I'm just like there's just girls I didn't even know were here since the first day there's just girls that they're just sneaking in there's no way I'm not seeing them and I'm blurring them now but as Matt was in the midst of a conversation with Victoria aka Queen aka Puffy Jacket for the episode Chris Harrison pulls him to the side and like hey I have to talk to you about something he pulls him outside and the girls run to the window to see what's going on and surprise there's five new girls who are showing up in the middle of the episode I wasn't really sure if this is something that happens all the time or this is just like really wild given it's quarantine and like this may seem like this is like the set group of girls that are in the house the OG ones that they're referring to themselves but no we had five new girls and they were coming in strong at least one of them the one is Brittany if you watch this episode um yeah Brittany 
kisses him immediately again I guess when you're coming out the limo you're supposed to give like a good first impression an impression that makes you memorable but I'm like girl you just got out and she's like I'm trying to catch up on lost time you, you did that and more at this point I am couldn't be me couldn't be me that's very bold and he went with it and they like made out it wasn't so much more of a peck there's four more girls and their entrances were kind of cut short which just shows that they were a lot more wholesome and innocent and maybe not as screen time worthy so it was Brittany and then the other four girls there was Miss Puerto Rico and I think her name was Catalina she had a crown on so that was like her impression like I was formerly in like in the pageantry world and Victoria producer fed girl she tells her hmm I'm the queen you can't be the queen here takes her crown off her head and puts it on her I'm trying to imagine like in the real world or on this or being like fake or whatever because I'm trying to understand if this is real or not I'm trying to imagine like being bold enough to take something off someone else and put it on themselves especially when you don't know them they're not your friend like that or just the reverse role being the person that's having your thing taken off of you and not flipping out not wild and out because because they fought Victoria walked away with the crown and put it down and I'm like this girl's a lot. I was losing my voice because I was just talking so fast because Victoria is just always something. Last episode, I had nothing to talk about her. It was all Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Now it's like Victoria's in our mouths again. Surprise, surprise. But what was weird is that Victoria was calling Brittany a slut whore before she even knows her. I'm confused about her confessionals. Like what time are they filming this when she has all this time to say things? In the last episode, she had so much to say about Sarah before Sarah was kind of like the villain for the whole house. Now she's talking about Brittany and Brittany just got in. Like, what do you know about her? I just don't get it by Anna. Anna is saying that she knows her, well, knows of her, not knows her from Chicago, but I'll get more into that. Anna is expressing that she recognized Brittany from Chicago and that she's not here for Matt aka him and yeah like I just don't know how is Chicago that small or is it big enough that people can know who's everybody and like would tell people about this one person. That's what kind of makes it seem unbelievable but that's a very strong like I don't know I just can't imagine how that could happen that's why I'm confused about the whole accusation. Victoria attempts to pull Matt for a chat yet again which she did before the girls arrived and Brittany comes to swipe her away and Victoria is obviously very upset. It's the new girls the OG girls are feeling some type of way about the new girls because they barely had times themselves and now you have five new women fresh new meat that Matt has his eyes on and is very excited to learn and these OG girls are like I haven't had that much time myself and now there's five new girls for him to learn and I was kind of curious if they were going to have like if they were to be included in the rose ceremony given that he doesn't even know them yet that they've only been there for five seconds versus these other girls if anything I thought that the five girls should have been excluded from it and that the old ones were probably a part of the, like the eliminating factor and that the five girls had like more time but no they were actually thrown into the fire already and a part of the rose ceremony which I didn't think was really fair as a result four of the five girls actually made it into the house so there was five or four girls who had to get eliminated including the fifth girl named Kim she seemed really cute and wholesome but we didn't get much of her to learn about her but we didn't get much time to learn about her it was probably a few hours it was really like unfortunate because they spent so much time in quarantine all the time of this first couple episodes come here for a night and then you're eliminated the arc already like I feel bad I can only imagine the next day the girls get a group date card and three of the four new girls are included in the group as well as Victoria and then this made me realize that Victoria hasn't had a one-on-one -on -one date from what, what I'm aware like she's on the group dates and she gets her one-on-one -on -one time and like makes out with Matt but I don't think Matt's ever like delegated hers like a one-on-one -on -one and maybe like it's kind of clear he doesn't really want to talk to her. I know there's a lot of girls, but Victoria, who gets so much screen time and everyone knows her name and her name is never like out of someone's mouth, you would think that she'd have a one-on-one -on -one if Matt was serious about it. So I was like, a, hmm. I'm still relatively new to the Bachelor Nation fandom situation, so I didn't know who Ben Higgins was. Is that his name? When Matt spoke to him, I was like, okay, I'm just going to gloss over the scene. I just know he's probably from another season. Turned out he was a Bachelor. Didn't watch until last year, so didn't know who he was. And the girls had a physical group date, aka competition and Mari won the competition not the group date but she won like the thing that went on during it when they started to have their one-on-one -on -one moment post the group date and then was pulled by Matt to finally get a conversation with each other um I never Anna because people always like to make memes about her I see her face often but I didn't know her name and she has her time right well Brittany Cousins like hey can I talk to Matt and I'm kind of really glad how Anna handled this despite her having external beef with Brittany before her coming in and I was like hey like I just sat down it's been like a minute can I have like some time to talk to him and she's like, well, like, I haven't had time to talk to him. And Anna's like, okay, like, give me five minutes then. Like, I just, let me have time. Like, I understand that you didn't, but I literally just sat down. And then Brittany kind of just hangs out in the corner awkwardly. And I'm like, girl, why do you do this? It's just so awkward. And you could tell that Anna felt uncomfortable because I think you could see her. She knows that she didn't actually leave, like, the proximity. So she was like, you know what, Matt? 
I feel uncomfortable, she's right there, or she said this in the confessional, either it was to him or in the confessional, and she's like, yeah, like, you just need to dip, or in the confessional, but she's like, I'm just going to remove myself and allow you to have time with her one-on-one. -on -one. This allowed Anna to have time to go trash talk with Victoria. I feel like if anyone has any dirt to say to anybody, it's Victoria, and Victoria receives it well in the sense that Victoria just has more shit to say, and I'm like, you're getting a bias, you're having a bias argument because Victoria will talk shit on anybody and has something to say. So it's not like she's a person that you're like, ooh, someone's agreeing with me. Like, no, Victoria just always, Victoria doesn't like anybody. So I don't really think that validates the argument about the whole escort situation because Anna's venting to her saying that people told her that Brittany's an escort and sleeps with rich men or she knows rich men and that's why she's here and she's not really here for Matt. And Victoria's just loving it. And I'm like, Y'all are just talking, this girl just got here. But essentially, Brittany is just shaking up the house. She is making drama already without even really saying anything except talking to Matt. And I'm for it, because I don't want this house to get boring, but I don't need people bullying and talking on each other in this manner the way that Victoria and Anna are doing. Eventually, Brittany comes back and Anna's like, hey, can I talk to you? Here I thought Anna was gonna pull Brittany to the side and like talk to her like woman on woman. No, she does it in front of the other girls. It's like, hey, I've heard some things about you and I wanna address it to you and I guess see if it's real or not. And Brittany's like, okay. And she's like, yeah, I heard from Chicago that I should stay away from you, that you're an like, she didn't actually use the word escort to her, to her, but she's like, you're around rich men. I think she said escort. But regardless, she's like confronting her about the rumor she heard. And then Brittany answers by saying, I've been in a long committed relationship, so that's not true. I don't know where you got that from. Are you also telling this to other people? And I'm glad that she said that because one thing is like saying it to me, but you're saying it to me in front of other people, which insinuates that she's already talking about it to other people before she even asked her, which means like it's malicious. It's not like you're coming from a place of caring, which obviously Anna never did, but like it's just you're trying to be petty and messy. So she's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I did go to other people before you, but I'm just asking you because people did tell me. And Brittany's like, yeah, I just don't like this. I feel uncomfortable. And here comes Victoria being petty and sipping her wine, like, well, you should leave then. And I'm like, okay, y'all are just doing a lot. This is messy. I thought you guys want to be with this guy, not fighting with each other. This is not a girl's fighting zone. Is it? It's a bachelor thing to get the man, but y'all are not doing that. Y'all are having more fun bickering, but that's beyond me. While that date was happening, the camera pans to the house where the girls who are not on that group date are just kind of on the couch and Michelle is a part of the new girls and she's trying to like break the ice with the OG girls and trying to like talk with them because she's kind of the outsider and has not really been there as long as the rest of them, obviously. And they're just not budging. They're not listening to her. They're just really upset. There's five new girls. I'm like, you can't hold it against them. This is the producers. This is the TV show. They brought them in late. Regardless, you are having the same opportunity that she did. You guys are all fighting for him. It sucks that some of you guys may have not had the one-on-one -on -one time before they got here, but that's just a matter of the game slash competition. I don't really know what way to refer to this, but like it is what it is. As a result, they get a card that says Michelle is having a one-on-one -on -one date. The girls are petty. They're upset. They're mad. They're not even really like happy for her. Not saying I expected them to be, but they weren't really good at hiding it either. But Michelle's like, yay, I get the one-on-one. -on -one. I get time because I just got here. And they're just like, I haven't even talked to him in a minute. This girl's getting it. I'm like, yay, I'm a new girl, black girl. Let's see what goes on. I'm really excited to see like some new, I don't want to use the word meet, but just a new girl. Michelle and Matt have their date and they have to read these closed class instructions. And like one says, take a leap of faith. And they go on this like bungee thing. I don't even remember what it's called. Someone can tell me in the comments if you're this far in the video. And they go and do that. They go on a hot air balloon. I'm like, this girl's getting like an amazing first date. This is like a dream first date for being here for a date. And some of these girls have been here for a few weeks or days. And you're having like an amazing time they're making out like it looks like real good chemistry eventually they start talking about like grown things like covid george floyd like school and the, like and the impacts of covid on school just really grown mature things i think matt's in his 30s i don't actually know i know he's a little bit grown she looks a little bit grown too so it kind of just looks really nice to see this versus the girls who are young and like being petty i know she's new and doesn't really have like any history with the other girls so it's just like refreshing to at least see that the rest of the girls in the house received the envelope that told them who was going to be included in a second group date the card read, are you ready to fight for love? And all the girls picked grown audibly because you don't want to go on a group date in the show. You want to have that one-on-one -on -one date. So if you were called to be in a group date, you just know that you're probably not going to have that intimate time. You're not going to be remembered in that way. Like you need to be able to stand out and going on a group date is not the place to do that. MJ, the blondie with the really, really curly hair. She's been really audible and like vocal since like the last episode. She was being very vocal about the Sarah situation. She's being very vocal about being on group dates and the other girls having more time. Like. I didn't know her the first couple episodes, I never seen her, but now the only way I know of her is just her being mad at everybody else and just being rude. And I'm like, why is that? Like, I don't know. Again, it could be a producer's edit cut thing, but it doesn't look good from my end. They get on their group date and they're fighting like 
boxing. I'm trying to understand the intent of the date and like how that would make Matt want one of them because obviously they're gonna go in pairs and be fighting each other. I'm like, you want the girl who's beating up someone really well. I'm really confused. Like, I just don't understand how you take the pick out of them. Like, you want to see them fighting each other over you. Like, what's the real resolution of this? And eventually someone gets punched in the face and like their nose, I don't know if it starts bleeding, but he's like, no, 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 we just stopped this. Yeah, Matt, this was going to be physical and really violent at some point. Some of these girls have pent up anger, so don't really know what you thought was going to happen, but he's like, hey, um, <laughs> this is really good and all, but you guys have earned the dinner after this now. You've earned like the party. Matt, like you are really annoying me, but I'm just here for watching this. <laughs> this is really interesting. After all that happened, Anna and Victoria are gossiping about Brittany and Victoria referred to her aka Britney as a serial killer. Very, very excessive. I know her saying doesn't mean that she's one, but you don't know her. Where, why, how do you refer to someone as that based off what? Because she wants the same guy as you? So do the other 20 girls that are here. Like, I'm trying to understand how when Victoria picks her targets on people, despite them actually like speaking up, because I think she doesn't like when people talk over her. That's one thing, whatever. But like, she just got here. So how do you be calling someone that? From nothing you don't even know her i'm sure you probably hardly remember her name aside from anna because anna just can't keep britney's name out of her mouth either as a result the whole episode katie is the grown grown beautiful woman like she was the last episode and it's like hey matt there is bullying going on in the house and i feel like you need to know about it i just wanted to address it it's getting really toxic in there like you need to know what's going on there's people's names who are being brought up there's people's names slash careers that could be tarnished due to this like yeah, I just wanted to let you know. And Matt's like obviously very confused because it's like, hmm, I thought I ended the gossip slash drama that happened when Marilyn was kicked out. Hmm, who's the main denominator who's doing the house? Victoria. So I feel like hopefully this means Victoria will leave. It's not this episode, the next one or something like that. I don't know. It has to probably also be Anna because Anna is the one who's talking about Britney very heavy. So I'm curious how that's going to play out. I don't really know if we'll ever learn if Britney is an escort, but that's her business if it is. But who are we to slut shame we're in 2021 if that's her business that's her business but she also denied it so why are you guys still talking about it but anyways that is my review i hope you all enjoyed it i just hit 1k subscribers and i really 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 appreciate all of you for that yeah i'm just really happy and i can't wait to see you on the next video see you all next time bye